Amen. Don't give up that PDF. Look at somebody and say, don't give up. Don't give up. Hey, man, this is going to be quick. Hey. <laughs> it will this time. <laughs> hope is the ability to wait for something that hasn't happened. That's what hope is. Waiting for something that hasn't happened. When you have hope, you have not given up on what you believe will happen. Once you give up, you don't have hope. The Bible said death and life is in the power of your tongue. So once you speak giving up, then you've destroyed your hope. Yeah. yeah, it's hard to hope against your own opinion. So if you've conditioned yourself to not hope or to give up, it's hard to believe again. Yeah, you got to keep, look at somebody say, keep hope alive. Keep hope alive. Amen. Keep hope alive. Amen. Jesse Jackson didn't invent that. Amen. I can say it. When you have hope, you have not given up on what you believe will happen. Romans 8 25. But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. So when you're hoping for something to happen, <clears throat> you with patience wait on it. Right? With patience. Look at somebody and say patience. You can't make things happen all the time. Yeah. Amen. 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 You may have a little ADHD or you may have a little OCD or whatever is sprinkled in your personality. But you better get a hold of it when it comes to hope. Because with hope, you have to have patience. You can't make it happen. So Romans tells us if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience Wait for it. Many times people give up on what it is they were waiting for because they decided to abandon hope. Oh, if you could read the inboxes I get. Pastor, my marriage, I just, I just give up. I said, oh, you give up on your marriage. I said, well, have you been praying about it? Yeah, I've been praying. I said, so God had nothing. No, he didn't do it. So you're going to give up because God hasn't done it. What if he's going to do it tomorrow? What if he's going to do it next week? What if you just get somewhere and act right? Make somebody want you. I don't say that, but I think that a lot. I think that a lot. I can tell by the way you're talking to me. Nobody likes you. He don't like you. <laughs> can I just tell the truth? Amen. You got to be liked if you want it to work. I don't understand. It, it, just, it just ain't working no more. I said, well, what, you, what you been doing? I've been telling him that he need to get. You've been telling him he need. You're supposed to tell that to the Lord. Amen. God called you to help a man. Help me, not condition a man. I taught that in P31 Wednesday, remember? You're not, you're not his conditioner. You don't make him what you think he ought to be. You help him be what God wants him to be. Amen. Amen. Don't no man want you to just pull his brain out of his head and embarrass him in front of all his friends. Because it's embarrassing when you can't have a thought in front of folks. And my wife saw it one time. This was the worst I've ever seen. This, this was just, this was Jezebel on Mount Rushmore. Her face just, because <laughs> had a lady, man, she was a, a, a guy. It was a, it was a man, a brother, I know him, you know. His son played the drums. He was like, I, I just want you to get my, my, my son some drums lessons, drum lessons. And she jumped in front of him and pushed him out of the way. She said, oh, you know, don't talk to him. You talk to me. Now, how much of the lesson? Because he, no, no, he don't handle this. I, I handle this. 
and you know, almost threw up. <laughs> oh, that's so disgusting. That's the most disgusting thing. I'm, I just saw your insides. I saw your intestines. It was that disgusting. She just pushed it. Am I telling the truth? Just push them out the way. Uh uh. You talk to me. It's like, eh. I'd rather not. Because I'm not him. So you can't do that to me. But how do you get a man? To, 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 what did you do to him? <laughs> Amen. So if you want it to happen, act like you want it to happen. Have you been loving? The Bible said you can win sometimes without a word. Just your actions. What are you telling God? Are you telling God on him? Amen. Yeah, so I get these inboxes and folks just, I said, so have you abandoned hope? And they don't want to answer that, so I, they don't say nothing. I said, so you've abandoned all hope. And they don't want to say nothing because they know what the next question, I mean, the next thing I've been saying is, why have you abandoned hope if you're in Christ? Look at somebody say, hopelessness is not of God. Hopelessness is not of God. Luke 9 and 62. And Jesus said unto him, no man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. So anybody that has hope and then don't have hope anymore, you're not fit for the kingdom. You know why? Because hope is what's going to bring us the kingdom. There is no kingdom for you without hope. We are hoping for what God is going to do. Hopelessness is an enemy of God. It's against God. In order to maintain hope, you must stay in true fellowship with God. So we lose hope when we get out of fellowship with God. So when we start thinking about the carnal ramifications, the carnal things, the carnal trappings, when we start thinking about the worldly things, what the world is saying about it, watching worldly shows and watching how they handle things, you know, all this old... Man, they showed a commercial the other day for the hip-hop reunion of the Atlanta Wives or something. And I just, the whole commercial, who slept with who, and butts and beaches. Why y'all on the beach just arguing on who slept, who smoked this, who stole this, who, it's just so hood, ratchet, ghetto and just oh I can't use this other word but gosh it's the N word why y'all acting like that and then mad if somebody call you that somebody call you a whore who, who said that your conscience Lord, help us as a people. Mm. But hopelessness is an enemy of God. And people that behave like that, like in those, on those shows and stuff, those are hopeless people. Those women gave up, mm, gave up hope in being a nice lady. Those men gave up hope in having a good record. They gave up hope in having good credit. You, know, you can look at the people and know if they have good credit. I know everybody on that show has bad credit. You have a million dollars in the bank and a 400 credit score. I know you do. You have a million dollars in the bank, but you can't pull none of it out. Your own credit won't let you get to your money. Record company got to give you stuff. That's a true story. Y'all think I just made that up? No, 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 no. They, they can't liquidate money. None of these artists and stuff, they can't go get money. You think they can just walk in the bank and come out with a suitcase full of money? No. They got to go to the record company, and the record company asks them, well, what is it you're trying to buy? And buy it for them. 
Yes, they've told me that. Yeah. Yeah. We got all them cars and stuff in the video, whatever. And as soon as the video is over, somebody come pick all that stuff up and take it back to the <laughs> But you got to stay in true fellowship with God to keep hope. All things that will happen must happen according to his plan and not our own. So in order to really have hope in him, we got to let things happen according to to his plan that doesn't mean everything that happens is going to be good because we don't know fully his plan yeah so we may lose people that we love we may go through things where we uh, go lose our job we may bad things may happen may sickness illness may come whatever the case bad things happen it's a part of life but we don't know the full plan of God but to have hope, we have to trust that he knows what's best and trust in his plan and not our own. Amen. I love the examples of Moses and Abraham. They never questioned God. Even when God said, I'm going to go kill everybody in Sodom. Abraham didn't question God. Why would you do that, God? Why would he? No, he said, well... There might be some righteous people there. So what if there are this many? Would you do it? He said, no, I wouldn't do it. Remember that? He had to have a conversation with them, but they weren't questioning God's decisions. That's right. You got to trust his plan. These were the same men that God took away from their entire families. That trust level was that high. Some of y'all, God did that. Took you away from your family and brought you here. Only to find out that you need to call your family once you got here. You thought, oh, it's on now. See, God, be <laughs> man, folk, give me that scripture. I didn't come to bring the uh, 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 peace, but the sword. And I came to turn mother against father and father against son and son against dog and dog against fish. You, you quoting all that stuff to me. You, y'all have no idea. This is what they tell me. I said, well, you need to call your mother. You need to call your father. Oh, no, God. Put a, he put a, a great gulf fix between us. That, that They can't come hither and neither can I come there. What? <laughs> call your mama. Call your daddy. What are you talking about? Because if you come and park here... You don't get mad at me and treat me like you treat them. Have we not seen that? Right. Yeah. yeah, so God may have brought you here, took you away from your family, but it was only so you could understand how to understand your family. Because that's still your family. Hey Amen. You can stay mad at them and hate them if you want to. But that's hurting you. Yeah. And that's causing you hurt because you've given up hope in that area. Yeah. Look at somebody say, keep hope alive. Keep hope alive. Man, as long as folks are breathing, you got to keep hope alive yeah. when they're your family. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yes. Romans 8 and 28. And we know that all things. How many things? All things. How much is all? All things. all things work together for good to them that love God. To them who are called according to his purpose. Amen. Amen. Our earthly realm is full of opposition to make us doubt and give up on what it is we are believing God for. We must not allow our circumstances and the way things appear to steal away our hope. Amen. Amen. You got to live by faith. Walk by faith and not by sight. You can't let the way things look now change your hope in how they could look later. Amen? Man, I get, you know, all day, every day. That's all folks want to send me is all the bad news, every bad thing that Revelation said was going to happen, everything that is happening now, everything, I just get it all day, everything. They just send it everything, everything, everything. And I, I look at 1% of it, maybe. 
because I'm just not going to fill myself up with the bad news and I know the good news. I have hope and the hope I have if I keep filling myself with bad news then it'll change my hope. It'll discourage me. It'll start making it look like there is no hope. Then after you say there is no hope you say why bother? Once you say why bother then what state are you in? But as a believer in God, I'm not giving up hope. So I'm not reading every bad thing. I'm not ingesting all the bad news. Amen. I, I'm still one of the ones that asked God, literally, should I post this? So I don't post nothing bad every day. You got to be careful. Amen. Because once you get an appetite for the bad, a lot of people start looking at the bad and get interested in the bad and then they get entertained by the bad. Because now they can get views and likes and comments. When they post the good, don't nobody say nothing. We must not allow our circumstances and the way things appear to steal away our hope. Romans 8 and 24. For we are saved by hope. Did y'all hear that? But hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why does he yet hope for? If you see it, it's not hope. Hope is in the unseen. That means you're waiting on God to do it. Amen? I'm waiting on God to come and fix everything. Yeah, everything Bill Gates is doing, everything Elon Musk is doing, all of them. I'm looking, at, I'm looking for God. My hope is in him. Amen. So yeah, I'm, I, I should know. Yeah, I should know the things that are happening and whatever. But man, I'm not going to be dismayed. I'm going to hope. Because we're saved. Hope is going to save us. Look at somebody and say, hope is going to save you. Yeah. Man, somebody was asking me today, well, what do you think about this in 2023? They say bad things are going to happen in 2023. Well, bad things happen in 2022 yeah. and 21 yeah. and 20 yeah. and 19. Yeah. We could just keep going. Man, bad things keep happening, but I have hope. Yeah. I have hope. I have hope that whatever it is, God is going to take me through it like he's taking me through everything else. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Me and my family going to be good because God promised that. I mean, but what if they just hit the switch and wipe everybody's money out in the bank and nobody has anything? I'm going to be good. I've been broke before. I've been in the dark before. Couldn't afford the electric bill. I've been in the dark burning candles. Amen. Sneaking an extension cord across the hall in the apartment. Brother, you know that light that they have outside, you be trying to use that electricity. See, ain't nobody... Amen. You ain't been there, have you? <laughs> Amen. Yeah, but I'm, hey, I've been broke before, I've been hungry before, all of that. And it didn't change my faith. Amen. Amen. And when I was broke and hungry and all that, that was my fault. I wasn't making enough money. So I had to fix that. I had to get, to get with the Lord and ask Him to bless the work of my hands. God, you know what I'm good at. Find me a way to make some money so I can feed my family. Yeah. Amen. You can keep hoping all you want, but if you ain't took no classes, <laughs> you ain't getting that raise. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Folk in there working diligently and all you doing is praying. No, you better pray and be diligent. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. If you want to succeed, I mean, whew, boy. Speaking in tongues and throwing oil all on your balls. He just started. <laughs> you know, I had this promotion. I asked you to take this class on Saturdays. Oh, class is on Saturday. Man, you should have took the class. Oh, wow. Oh, oh. Security. <laughs> Don't you be trying to manifest in spiritually scare him <laughs> hey man you gotta do see that's the thing some folks 
or the, the, what, what's the old saying? They're so heavenly minded till they know earthly good. You so saved that you don't want to obey the rules. Amen. You got to be saved and obey the rules. Amen. If you're speeding, just take the ticket in peace. Yes, give me the ticket. Yes, God is good. Yes. Don't be, oh, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Why do people do that? You make us all look bad. <laughs> but our earthly realm is full of opposition to make us doubt. So just everything in our world is making us doubt and making it harder for us to hope. Bad experiences make it hard to hope. When you've been through it before and it didn't turn out good, that makes it hard to hope. Negative people make it hard to hope. Just when you muster it up and say, you know what, I'm believing, yeah, man, I'm, I'm hoping for this. I don't know why. Because it don't ever happen for me. I need another friend. Uh, this is our last conversation. I just want you to know that. Guys. We've been friends for years. Years too many. Man, I'm not going to be around no negative person like that. Spitting venom in their mouth upside down. Just, mm. Oh, no. Less than ideal circumstances can mess with your hope. That's what I was talking about with the wives of Atlanta and the hip hops, whatever they call. What is the name of that? Love and hip hop. As if they go together. Good night. But there is hopelessness because they're less than ideal situation. Being ratchet, being in the hood, being poor, being selling drugs, whatever they did that was less than ideal. They said, it's, my situation is so hopeless, I'm going to glorify the bad and make the bad good. Yeah. Yes, sir. That's what they're doing with the show. They're selling the bad. Yes, sir. Yep. Yeah. Made it look hopeless. But things can look bad, but the darkest hour always occurs just before the dawn. Man, if I can tell you, Almost every time when I was about to give up and lose hope, what I was hoping for was right around the corner. Yeah. yeah. The darkest hour when you're about to give it up, right when you are at the point of breaking. Look at somebody and say, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. It will happen. Amen. No matter what you wait waiting on. No matter what you wait waiting on. I've been looking for a wife for 10 years. Well, look for one for 11. Yes. Amen. You look for 10. The hard part is over. Been waiting on a husband for 10 years and ain't nothing happened. Wait 11. What are you going to do if you stop waiting? What's the answer to stop waiting? Go get one yourself? Do you know how much you're going to hate him? Do you know how bad? <laughs> you just have no idea. Wait for God. Wait. For, look at somebody and say, hold on. Hold on. It will happen. And see, in the pro well, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but I'm going to say this. In the process of holding on, you got to do something. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Amen. You got to occupy until it comes. Yeah. Yes, Amen. And until the husband comes, you practice good hygiene. Yeah. And learn how to get your hair combed. Brush your teeth. Learn how to spray cologne in your direction. You've been missing. It's been going out. Amen. Amen. Young men, same thing. I've been looking for a wife. Baby. Well, if you look like something, maybe she'll find, maybe she'll see you. You've been looking and she keep turning the corner getting away. She don't look like nothing. 
look like something. My wife had no idea that I was living out of a one basket of clothes, two shirts and three pair of pants. I don't know how. They must have had the Elijah blessing on them. Because I was... <laughs> Man, I'd switch that stuff around and do something different and be looking good. I ain't, I mean. Iron that crease in there. <laughs> Iron it too many times to get shiny. <laughs> See, they don't know. These young folks don't know. Get that shiny crease. Pants leg look like the front of a boat. <laughs> man man my cousin would cut my hair he knew where I was going he knew I was going to pick tomatoes because he cut my hair my cousin Chris he cut it he didn't know what he was doing but he knew how to make it look okay for free I ain't paying him nothing but if you can't produce a license I ain't paying now that's the law that's the law in Texas. <laughs> yeah, but I have to do what I have to do, man. You gotta, hey man, don't be just hoping that you're not doing anything. Clean your car out, brother. Why are the girls stepping in your car and hay is on the ground? Why is hay in your car? Clean the car, man. Get the little air fresh and a little tree. Put that in there. She want to get in your car and it smell like feet. <laughs> hey, man, I know I'm telling the truth. That, all of this is the truth. Man, you want to win her. Look like something and act like something. Even if you're not, convince her that it ain't going to always be this way. Hope. That's hope. You want your relationship better? Make it better. Make it better. You want your husband to treat you better? Treat him better. Just all of a sudden get super sweet. Just, I mean, sweet, just so sweet he get loving diabetes. He don't know what happened. You doing stuff you've never done before. You cook. like hey what's going on like, what? <laughs> I cook the meal for you take it to him in bed just give it to him on a tray you can eat this while you watch the game He's like what in the world did you did, did my doctor test come in I mean was it that bad just get sweet see what happens my wife don't do nothing. Not say she don't follow me. She don't want to. She don't do this. Listen to you. I wouldn't follow you either. Listen to you, dude. You sound like trash. Man, my wife acting like Why would she do anything? Anything? I don't want to hear you. Get away from me. I don't like you like her. Me and her together. We talk. Get away from me. change yes, yes, amen make hope work for you yeah. that's how you encourage hope yes, sir. it's easier to hope when you know you're working with hope yeah. and not against hope yeah. look at somebody and say hold on, hold on. It, will it will happen 2 Corinthians 4 and 18 while we look not at the things which are seen but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal. But the things which are not seen are what? Eternal. Eternal. Yes. 
As long as what we are hoping for is in accordance with God's will, then it will come to pass. Amen? He is not slack concerning his promises. However, there is always a waiting period, period to mature us in him. So when you're waiting with the hope, there's a process involved to mature you. So when you get it, you'll keep it. I, I know I just preached. Whatever it is, that's a waiting period. Y'all know God has a waiting period. Like you going to buy a gun. You got to wait on God. He's going to make you wait. Yeah, but that waiting period is to mature you. Second Peter 2 and 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is what? He takes a long time. He takes a long time because he wants to mature you. He don't want to just give it to you in the state you're in now. He wants to mature you so you can keep it. Amen. So you'll, like we say, do right by it. Why'd he bless you with a wife and you can't even keep a courtship? Amen. Why'd he bless you with a husband? And you, 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 you just talk smart to every dude you see. You got a problem in your heart. You upset with men. Yeah. So God's taking you through a process to clear that out of your heart. Yeah. So when he gives you his man, because you know there are men praying for women. Right. Amen. God got him hid somewhere. Yeah. When it's time you show up, that's not it. You won't scare him off. You don't have to clap. I know I just spoke facts. Amen. Let's first understand what his will is so we do not put selfish carnal wants and desires in the hope category. That's where folk mess up. You're hoping for the wrong stuff. Amen. You hoping for a 20 and 23 car and taking it before the Lord and God could care less. God could care less. Amen. This is the one you hoping God get back at somebody for you. Lord, you, you praying, Lord, you said vengeance was yours, said the Lord. Avenge me in Jesus' name. The Avengers, the spiritual Avengers, not the, not the Marvel ones, the spiritual ones. God, I need the spiritual ones. Amen. From the third heaven, come down and just f f with fiery wrath upon my neighbor. In Jesus' name. I'm hoping, I'm hoping that the day that their day is coming. Their day is coming. That's witchcraft. Don't talk like that. Your day is coming too if you talking like that. That's witchcraft. Let me sit back because once you say that, their day is coming. Now you're watching, waiting on the day. You went from speaking it, now you checking their page to see if calamity has come upon them. Man, I'm preaching in this place. No, those aren't things to hope for. If you are believing God for any of these that I'm about to read, then keep hoping because they are all in accordance with his will for you. This is your hope list. It needs to be on here. Healing. If you're waiting on a healing, keep waiting. Keep hoping. Jeremiah 33 and 6. Behold, I will bring it health and cure and I will cure them and will reveal unto them the abundance of peace and truth. That's your promise. God said he will bring health and cure. So keep hoping for healing. Amen. Keep hoping for soundness of mind. What do I mean? That don't mean something wrong with you. That, that means we're going through a tough time where they're trying to scare you and fear. And you want to keep a sound mind during this time. See, once you are in fear, you'll make decisions based on fear. But when your mind is sound, you'll make sound decisions. Soundness of mind, 2 Timothy 1 and 7. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of what? Power and of love and what? So it will come keep hoping. Amen. You may have anxiety right now while I'm preaching. Keep hoping. Keep hoping. 
for soundness of mind. Relationships with loved ones. Keep hoping. Amen? Keep hoping. Keep hoping for a relationship with your father. Relationship with your mother. Keep hoping. No matter what it looks like now, keep hoping. I was telling a brother the other day and he was like, yeah, you know, man, I just, I just give up. I give up on my daddy. I said, why? Because he don't never call me. I reach out to him. I try to, you know, uh, 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 reach out to him on certain dates and different things. And he don't never call me back. He don't ever call me. He don't ever call me. I said, well, what? you keep calling him. I mean, I don't, it seems like he ought to call me. Sometimes I said, maybe he's not going to call you because all you're going to do is ask him why he wasn't there when you was growing up. And then you know what he said? Oh yeah, that is what I want to ask him. I said, well, you can't do nothing about that now. So the looming threat of that conversation jumping off is keeping him from calling you. So maybe if you'll call him and talk about some other stuff, then he'll understand that, okay, you're past that. Uh, See, there's no way you're going to have a good relationship with your kids and a bad relationship with your, 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 your parents. You're just not. Can't happen. Can't happen. You're going to ruin your kids because your relationship was ruined. Has to happen. It's just going to happen. It's going to happen. So you got to make the effort. No matter what, make the effort. His birthday, call him. Send him a card, text him. Can I preach? You can't give up hope. You don't want people to give up hope on you. Colossians 3 and 13. Forbearing one another. That's putting up with one another. Did you hear that? Putting up with one another. You may can't stand some folks, but you got to forbear. Put up with them. Forgive one another. And if any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ Christ forgave you and didn't ask no questions. He didn't say, remember that time when I was calling on you and you ignored me and went and did the food. Christ didn't ask no questions. So he said, the same way he forgave you, so also do ye. Hope. Husband and wife, you're hoping for a husband and a wife? Oh! Oh! Keep hoping. Why would you stop? Amen. Single town quiet. Keep hoping. Thank you. You better keep hoping. Single men, keep hoping. Don't you give up. Look at them. They so shy. They started looking away because I'm walking right up. They all just, it was like a, it was beautiful. Just, Yeah, keep hoping. It's God's plan. Genesis 2 and 18, and the Lord said, it is not good that a man should be alone. Married men, is it not good that you be alone? Amen. I was talking to Brandon's mama uh, yesterday, and I was telling her, I was like, man, I know this baby is coming, and so baby, I don't know what her plans are, how she's going to travel and stuff, but Man, she can't stay down there. I can't do it. I need her here. Amen. Go a day, come back. Go another day, come back. Go a day, maybe two, maybe. Come back. We like to be together. Amen. Somebody like, she can stay gone as long as she wants. Long as she want. I will play Madden all day. Will you just be knee deep in Funyuns? And dirty clothes. <laughs> Amen. But yeah, it's not good that a man be alone. I will make a help me. God made a woman to help the man. So woman, if you know you that help a man needs, keep hoping. Keep hoping. And man, you know you whack with no favor. 
You better keep hoping. Keep hoping. Can I keep preaching in here? Amen. Hoping. Hoping. And don't be worried about the COVID and the vax and all of that and all that stuff. Man, God got somebody for you. All he's waiting on is for you to act right. Can you mature during this period and quit having setbacks and let the Lord bless you with what you need? Amen. The population of the world is going down and you get no worry. God knows where you are. Amen. One day the cable dude gonna look at you different. Hey. I've been fixing this cable for years, but I ain't never noticed you. But today something different. You combed your hair that day. Amen. You didn't know he was saved. He wasn't talking to you because of your hair. But the Lord said. Amen. Give God something to work with. Ain't nothing wrong with looking good. Amen. God make a help me. That's what is that is a part of God's will for you. Children, if you're hoping for a child, Psalms 113 and 9, he make it the barren woman to keep house and to be a joyful mother of children. The barren woman. Keep hoping. Keep hoping. Restored marriage. Keep hoping. You want your marriage restored? Now some folk don't want their marriage restored. I'm not talking to you. If you want your marriage restored, you keep hoping. You want things to be better? Keep hoping. But don't just hope. Make it better. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Buy her something. Yeah. <laughs> <Child>. <laughs> 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 Buy something. Buy something. Hey Amen. Don't buy something that's going to help you. I got you this blender. I got you this blender. You making smoothies. Every... <laughs> oh, Every morning she wake up. I thought you... Don't be buying Stacy no barbecue grill. <laughs> she don't want a grill or a smoker. I got you this smoker. It's just uh, this pit. It's nice. Yeah, but uh, buy, 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 um, amen. Do something nice in the process. You waiting on God to restore it? It may be bad, but just do nice things in the process. Look at them nicely. You know, sometimes when they sleep, look at them and pray and say, God, what happened? Where is the love I used to have? Where is, bring that back. Restore that. Let's see. That's okay. Yeah, that's if you want them. Now, if you don't want them, I ain't talking to you. When you don't want them and you're going to put them on the market, they're going to get somebody, then you're going to be really swole. That's what they're doing now. 1 Corinthians 13 and 7, love bears all, how many things? All. Puts up with how many things? All. How many things does love put up with, all. according to the Bible? All. all things, bears, that's what it means, bears, puts up with all things. That's right. yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's quiet in here. It believes. All. It hopes. All. Now, how you going to leave a relationship that you don't have hope in and hope in another relationship? You can't change your hope. It's you. You're the one that didn't hope. So that's going with you. 
So hopeth all things and then ooh, endures, goes through all things. Deliverance, hope, hope. You know, some folks was in the world hardcore. Got saved, filled with the Holy Ghost. God changed them, made them a new creation. But they past keep chasing them. And you got to believe God that you are delivered. You can't give up on hope. Things keep falling. You keep popping up, keep chasing you down. That's not a curse. That's life. You got to get strong enough to get past all of that. And even when you're strong enough to get past it, it's going to revisit again anyway. And you got to be strong enough. So you got you to gotta keep hope. You got to keep hope. Because once you say, why bother? I give up. It's just too hard. To, it's just once you do that, then you defeat it. But the Bible says we're saved by hope. Psalms 34 and 17. The righteous cry and the Lord what? You don't think he hears you? And it don't have to be a sin or something like that. It could just be the result of sin and circumstance. Maybe you caused a lot of dysfunction in your life. You wish it would go away but it can't. Because it's in people. And those people are close to you. Maybe your own family. It's issues. But you got to believe God for deliverance. Yeah. But God understands. Okay, I made some bad choices. I did some dumb stuff. I created just a terrible situation. But I have hope that God is going to fix this and work this out in my, for my good. Make it better or give me the peace I need. But I'm not giving up hope. Praying for your children to be saved. And it looked like they get more demonic. Every time you pray, you can't give up hope. I'm going to hope and believe that something is going to get a hold of them. You know how you pray that? Because something got a hold of you. Something got a hold of me when I thought there was no hope. So I'm not giving up on my children. The righteous cry and the Lord heareth and deliver them out of how many of their troubles? How many of their troubles? He's faithful to do that. If you keep hope. Summary. When it comes to hope, we must make sure we are hoping for the right things. God wants to give us good things. And in, that enhance our lives and make our journey easier. But many times we are trying to use hope to get carnal things instead of the things that matter to God. Money, fame, vindication, etc. should not be things we are hoping for. We should allow those things to come when they come and do what is right in the meantime. Being diligent and steadfast in our abilities will yield dividends in most cases. But we should not petition God for things to heap up on our lust or to retaliate against others. Amen. Amen. However, hoping for the things that we desire in accordance to God's will should never be given up on. No matter how hopeless it looks, we must continue to believe that God will grant us what we desire. Imagine Moses and the children of Israel standing before a great sea. With Pharaoh's army fast approaching. Have you ever just imagined that? Can you imagine the opinions of those that doubted what they were saying to Moses? Can you imagine what he had to hear and how loud? That was a million people. A million people. So many people that the cloud uh, by day and the fire by night had to let a whole day pass just to get the people through the Red Sea. That's how many it was. Can you imagine all those scared, fearful voices yelling at Moses what they were saying? And he still had to hear God? Yes. 
The situation looked impossible. It was impossible. A sea in front of you and the army behind you in fear. They forgot that God made the earth and feel that sea. Listen, that's what fear does. It made them forget that God made the earth. It's the God that turned the whole Nile River into blood. They forgot. Fear make you forget. Yeah, a lot of these saints forgot. Forgot their own testimony of how God healed them. I heard their testimonies. God healed them. Now they wear a mask and want to high five you from across the room. You forgot your testimony, huh? They forget. Fear will make you forget. And so in fear, they forgot God made the earth and feel that sea. If he filled the sea, then he can empty it or part it. <laughs> if he filled it. So all they had to do was believe that the God that created it can change it and make it work for their good. That's all they had to believe. The same principle applies with your life. The God that created you can give you exactly what you need. Did he not make you? Isn't that what you say? Then he can give you what you need. Whether it's healing in your body or healing of relationships in your family, whether it's restoration of your marriage or marrying a godly spouse, whether it's deliverance from bondage that plagued you for some time or just peace in less than ideal situations. Whatever it is you are hoping for, God is faithful and will deliver. Never stop hoping. Amen? Yeah. Never speak hopelessness. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. All the people and all the opinions and everything, everybody knew exactly what Moses ought to do. We need to surrender to Pharaoh and go back to Egypt. That's what they wanted to do. Everybody knew. But Moses was listening to God. And Moses said, no matter how bad this situation gets, my hope is in the one that brought us this far. They were at the edge of freedom. They were right there where they would never have to deal with the Egyptians again. Right there. What if he had given up on hope? But he was right there and he spoke it in this passage. He said, Moses said unto the people, fear not and do what? That means shut up. Stand still, hush, and see the salvation of the Lord, which will show to you this day. For the Egyptians who you have seen today, <laughs> ye shall what? If you could just hope. You're right there. They were right there. If you can just hope. You won't ever see these Egyptians. Again. You'll see them again no more. Forever. The Lord shall fight for you. And ye. Shall hold your peace. Everyone stand. Look at somebody say don't give up. You need more hope? We're just going to pray. Come on up. Hope. Don't give up hope. Whatever it is you're hoping for, don't give up. Husband, wife, children, relationship with family, deliverance. See folks saved. See somebody changed. Not going to give up hope. Not giving up hope. Hallelujah. Don't give up. Fear will make you give up. But God says, hope. Hope. And when you get it, you don't ever have to deal with that again. It's over. Like Moses said, this is it. If you can just, this last push of hope. If you can make it, 
you won't have to deal with it again. When it's over, it's over. But don't give up hope. Whatever it is you're hoping for. Anyone else? Don't give up. Don't give up. Everyone bow your heads. Father God, we just thank you, Lord, and praise you and give you glory and honor, Lord. I just thank you, God, for this message. I thank you, Lord, that this message just registers so much with all of us in here. Father God, it just speaks to the time that we're in in these end times where we're dealing with fear-mongering and people trying to make us afraid, people trying to make us give up on our hope, people trying to make us throw in the towel and just say, why bother? But Father, I thank you, Lord, for a message like this. Father God, where we're encouraged to not give up. Help us, Lord, and strengthen us to not give up. Everyone lift your hands. Father, give us all an extra measure of courage so that we can keep hope alive in this hour. Give us an extra measure of faith. Give us an extra measure of hope so that we will not let go. We will not give up. We will not back down. We will not turn and go the other way. But Lord, we keep our hope alive in you. Help us, Lord, to hope in this hour. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on and hug somebody and tell them, keep hope alive. I'm going to keep hoping. Come on, look at him and say, don't give up. Tell him if you need help hoping, I'll hope with you. But I'm going to keep hope alive. Hallelujah. 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 Sing it, PJ. God is more than able. He can do anything. Keep trusting in him, my brother. He's more than able. God is more than able. Lord, I believe I know what it looks like But you gotta walk by faith And not by sight I know what it feels like But walk by faith And not by sight Jesus walk by faith and not by sight. I know what it feels like, but walk by faith and not by sight. One more time, say, I know what it looks. Come on, even Jesus understands. Walk by, He's touched with the feelings of our infirmities. Come on, say, I know. Say it by faith. God is more than able. God is more than able. Come on, don't stop believing. He can do anything. Yes, I know God is more than able. Lord, I believe. Come on, can you lift up your hands and say it? Oh, yes, I know. Do anything. Keep trusting.
trusting in his word. Keep believing in him. Say, I know God is Lord.